Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about the different uh, sources used in electron microscopy. As you can uh, see on the picture there are three objects so each of them are uh, different sources so I wrote their name uh, below them. So if we start from the left so this is a small piece of tungsten filament so you can see that the uh, filament goes up and down like here it's uh, welded on the surface I will show you a closer picture <coughs> about this and then uh, in the middle we have uh, basically all the interesting part is on this uh, ceramic disc here on the white uh, part the purple part is just the holder of this thing so this is the lanthanum hexaboride uh, source and uh, you can see that uh, it's more difficult to see the tip as compared to the tip of this filament and then on the right hand side under this cap we have the field emission gun uh, there is a hole in the middle right here and then uh, in the very middle of that hole uh, you can see a very small uh, tip and then uh, all the other things are uh, under this uh, so-called suppressor cap. So I put these three sources next to each other so you can see them how they differ in size and uh, how they differ in appearance and then uh, in the following slides or pictures I will show you some close-up pictures and uh, I will tell you some more details so first of all let's talk about the tungsten filament uh, so this is the tungsten so you can see the filament here it's on a ceramic disc with two terminals and it's surrounded by a metallic ring which uh, helps you to put it in the holder inside the microscope and uh, I took some images with uh, a stereo microscope uh, it's a simple optical uh, sim simple optical microscope <coughs> and I used uh, different magnifications but uh, the first picture here is basically this part so as you can see the tungsten wire is welded on the surface of this uh, terminal so this is the welding and uh, you can see the scale is uh, 500 micrometers so you can imagine how small is this wire so it's like roughly one tenth of the scale so it's like 50 micrometers which is like uh, equivalent to the thickness of the human hair and uh, down here you can uh, see it from another perspective so you can see that you have the weld on this side and then the weld is on the on the other side so there is a like a small bending in this uh, filament and then here you can see it better so and uh, you see basically this is uh, this is the radius here so this is the tip of the of the tungsten filament so actually the electrons uh, ejected from here and then they go down which is now up but uh, they go down in the column and uh, they got uh, uh, they interact with the lenses and they interact with uh, the aperture and everything and at the end the electrons which are generated here end up uh, on the surface of your specimen and then <coughs> they interact with the specimen and uh, based on the detector you will detect these electrons or the produced electrons so this is how the tungsten uh, filament uh, looks like 
So this is another filament, or a not filament, it's another cathode. So this is the lanthanum hexaboride uh, cathode. Another electron source. So this is a bit uh, more close-up picture. So you can see the two uh, connections or terminals, and then uh, another ceramic holder, and there are like two uh, different metals go up to this part where the tip is heated up and then that emits the electrons. So here is a bit uh, dark but you can see so the current flows through uh, basically this way so it goes up and down and yeah it's not so good explanation but uh, you, you can get it. Uh, if you rotate this for uh, 90 degrees this whole thing and uh, from the side it looks like something like this so you have this upper part of the uh, cylinder and then uh, there are like two small connections so from here you you see it like this but uh, in if you rotate this kind of uh, holder then there are like two wires and that hold the, the, those wires or connections uh, conduct uh, the electricity and then inside this uh, barrel or cylinder we have this lanthanum hexaboride tip so this is how it looks like so and then uh, of course these go to the two bigger uh, connections so the these are these ribbon like things like this and like this so th that is this and this and then these uh, pillars are, are this but now it's from 90 degrees uh, different perspective so this is another uh, stereo microscope picture so you can see the tip better so you can see that this is not really a conical shape, but it's more like a pyramid or sort of, or a tetrahedron. So, but uh, usually it's something like a cone without a tip. So it's sort of this. But then this uh, more looks like something like a pyramid. I cannot really draw it, but. Yeah, you can get it. And then uh, this cylinder gets or generates the heat basically. And uh, on this picture, it's just a bit more magnification. You can see that the scale is 100 micrometers. So basically, the width of this uh, crystal is 100 micrometer roughly. And then the tip is like maybe 20 so yeah and uh, as I mentioned in the previous uh, lectures since this crystal here is a ceramic uh, so it does not conduct the electricity so you have this crystal and it's surrounded by this uh, metallic or uh, conductive uh, thing and you run the current through this kind of uh, metallic stuff and uh, that will like emit the heat as radiation or electron bombardment and warm up the tip and then when the tip reaches the operation temperature which is around uh, let's say uh, 1500 degrees celsius then uh, it will be more easy to uh, thermalize the electrons and then uh, get them out from the specimen by applying a voltage uh, an acceleration or extraction voltage and then this electron uh, goes down through the column and reaches the specimen so this is how the lanthanum hexaboride cathode looks like.
And then uh, this is the field emission gun. Well, <laughs> nothing is really visible, but uh, I tried to draw this uh, from another perspective, but it was really challenging to try to take a picture of the tip, because the tip is basically in this hole. But uh, if you take a look uh, on this from a somewhat uh, similar perspective, then uh, just the part of the cup or the cylinder is something like this. So you, you have the hole in the middle and then in the middle of the hole there is this very very small tip. Uh, you can uh, see it with naked eyes actually but I just could not take uh, a good close-up picture to, to show it. But there is a small tip and then, then that tip is welded to the uh, wires and then those wires are welded to the terminals so this part is basically almost the same as for the tungsten filament and then these two things are on a ceramic disc and yeah these just go to the power supply so what you have to know about this uh, is like uh, let me draw it once more so we have these two like connecting uh, metallic rods and then we have like mm, some simple uh, tungsten wires and then here is the field emission tip and then this very small tip is here and uh, this all stuff is like surrounded by a so called suppressor and then this suppressor is made for uh, preventing any stray uh, thermionic emission from uh, going down uh, through the column. So this is like, yeah, suppressing everything. So in the middle of this uh, thing, there is a very, very small uh, tip. So this cap is basically to, to protect the, the rest of the column. And then uh, basically this is how it looks like. I did not want to remove it, but uh, yeah, just uh, believe me. And uh, yeah, this is the best uh, type of emitter or gun. So you can reach very high current densities with this type of gun and very good uh, beam. So this should be used in the state of the art microscopes in order to get really good um, image quality and everything like that. So we have uh, three or four different uh, type of sources. So we have the tungsten source, we have the uh, lanthanum hexaboride source and we have the field emission gun and uh, this can be thermal or cold. Uh, yeah, let me just divide it into two. So this is thermal and uh, cold. So I will uh, treat them as separate. So we have these things and then I will make a large table here. And then uh, I will compare them with some uh, aspects. So for example let's talk about the source size. So basically, this is the physical size of the source, and I already showed you on the on the photos. So, if you remember the tungsten uh, hairpin, the diameter was roughly uh, 50 micron, and then uh, the lanthanum hexaboride is like uh, even smaller, like 
can be time, 10 times smaller so uh, 5 micrometers and then uh, the thermal uh, field emission gun can be like 250 angstrom and uh, the cold can be much smaller like 50 angstrom and uh, yeah this is basically the size so small is good if you want to have like high uh, resolution but if you want uh, big uh, spot size or very high beam current you might uh, want like uh, bigger sources because then uh, you can reach yeah higher beam currents or higher spot size and then another good uh, perspective can be the brightness so we have the brightness and uh, yeah the unit is like ampere per square centimeter uh, centi square and uh, steradian SDR so for the tungsten it's like 10 to the fifth uh, power and then one order of magnitude uh, better for the uh, lanthanum hexaboride and uh, these are basically the same so 10 to the eighth for both roughly and then uh, this basically the brightness describes the performance of the gun the best uh, we can also talk about the energy spread so this is basically the spread of the electrons uh, which which are emitted from the gun so for the tungsten it can be like two two three uh, electron volts uh, for the lanthanum hexaboride it's like uh, one electron volts one electron volt and uh, for the thermal type it's like 0 0.75 electron volts and for the cold it's even lower it's uh, roughly the half of it and then why is this important so for example if you want to focus <laughs> the beam then if you have a spread in the energy then uh, it's uh, more difficult to focus that kind of uh, beam it's the same as you have uh, in the optics uh, and it's called chromatic aberration and the same uh, in the electron microscopy so this is also a chromatic uh, aberration and then if you want to have like high resolution then uh, you want to avoid chromatic aberration because then otherwise your image quality would be messed up uh, we can also talk about the vacuum requirements uh, then let's define this in uh, TOR so for tungsten it should be like smaller than 10 to the minus 5 for lanthanum hexaboride it should be even smaller 10 to the minus uh, 6 and uh, the thermal requires even smaller 10 to the minus 8 and the cold is 10 to the minus 10 so this requires very very high uh, vacuum and uh, we can talk about the lifetime as well uh, 
let's define it in hours. So the tungsten has a very bad like 200 hours lifetime and then uh, this is like 1000 hours uh, lifetime lanthanum hexaboride and uh, the field emission guns are much better so they are like 2000 for both of them. So the vacuum uh, requirements and the lifetime uh, correlate with each other and uh, also you can like see that the tungsten does not require that large vacuum but the lifetime is much uh, lower of it. Of course other things are uh, also influencing this but uh, you can see that the higher the vacuum uh, the less chance is uh, the less is the chance for uh, for example contamination so of course if you don't uh, stress your sample with contamination uh, you will extend its uh, lifetime but on the other hand uh, for example tungsten and lanthanum hexaboride are not really uh, sensitive but uh, the cold FEG is very very sensitive and uh, the thermal uh, FEG is somewhat sensitive but it's not that bad. We can also talk about the operating temperature so let's make it in kelvins. So of course uh, tungsten we already described this this is the hottest so it's like 2800 it varies of course you have to change it a little bit but uh, it's roughly 2800 <coughs> lanthanum hexaboride is like 1000 uh, less roughly so 1900 thermal assisted uh, FEG is basically the same as the uh, lanthanum hexaboride so this is like 1800 and cold well that's basically room temperature let's talk about the current density which is uh, defined in ampere per square centimeter so yeah as we know that uh, the tungsten has very low so that's uh, let's say like 3 or the order of magnitude of 3 and then we already thought that uh, the lanthanum hexaboride is one order of magnitude higher and then let's call it 30 and then uh, we have a big jump so it's like 5000 for the uh, thermally assisted uh, field emission gun and then there is even more jump between uh, these two because this is like 17,000 uh, so it's very high so I think this was all about uh, the three or four different uh, emitters or electron sources so in the next uh, lecture I will start to go through the optics, so that will be the content of the next lecture. So see you there.